Hello everyone, welcome to yet another 2 Minute Tuesday. Today is my dad's birthday and in honor of his birthday I have an epic tip for you all. I'm really excited about this one because I've been using it for a little bit and I realize that a lot of people don't know about it. I kind of save it for my administrators, you know, when I'm training new customers and I'm doing workshops with them. I save this one as a gem because like 99.99% .99 of the time people don't know about this one. But I'm going to share it with you today. I'm in a good mood. I'm going to share it. So here's what's going on. I'm here in the opportunity form. As you can see, I'm looking at AdventureWorks. This is a trial environment, of course. And one of the things that you notice with a lot of customers is that when they're working on the address, the state and province field out of the box is a text field, which means you can type anything you want. And it's a big problem. It's a text field. So what a lot of companies do, and I kind of simplify this uh, really quick, for the video. What a lot of companies do is they add a drop down menu. This is a custom drop down menu that has all the states. So in this case, I would go and select Florida and that's going to be the state, right? So these two are not connected. You can see that I can pick whatever I want in here and it never populates to the state, which then breaks mapping. Now, Bing Maps are really good. Like even if you don't have a state, it figures out like based on the city or wherever you are, it tries its best to, you know, uh, connect to that address. But I've seen it in a lot of cases that it doesn't work. Plus, you know, if you are using these addresses for like mailing and stuff like that, then you want to make sure you have the right, you know, state in there. So what a lot of people do is that they create, you know, they, they do the, uh, the, the state as a drop down menu to make it easy, but then they create like um, a business rule or a, or a real time workflow or some kind of mechanism to copy, you know, the label from the drop down menu into the text field so you can satisfy the need of Dynamics to have that state on the out of the box field. But what if I told you that there's a way to convert this field into kind of an option set to be able to show the values from this option set in this text field, kind of combining the two. Well, that's today's tip. That's what we're talking about this week. So let's start the countdown and let's go. So in order to make this work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of a control. So I'm going to go into the form editor and you can see right here, I have the two state fields. This is the out of the box. You can read address one state province. This is the custom one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the drop down menu. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to use the out of the box field only. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and double click on that field. I'm going to navigate to controls and click on add control. The control that we're going to be adding is autocomplete. Now check that. I'm going to click autocomplete, click on add. And now I have to complete basically two more things. I have to tell them that instead of looking at a view, which is great, by the way, you can do this with like um, a view of, you know, uh, child records, for example. Um, I'm going to say this is going to be an option set and I'm going to select the option set from the list of fields, the field that I added before. And notice I didn't create it inside a solution or anything. Again, this is a trial environment. So new state or province. That is the field that I added earlier. That's it. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to save and publish how it looks for the users. I actually apologize. I just remember that I didn't enable it. So let me go back into the controls right here. And one of the things that I forgot to do was to enable it on the autocomplete, enable it on the web form. This is the one that, that I want. I can also enable it on phone and tablet too, but the one that we're testing is the web form for now. So once again, let me save and publish. All right, now that we're published, let's go back into our account. Let's hit F5 to refresh the form. And now that the form is up, I'm going to navigate down into the state and province and check this out. You're not going to believe this. It's a drop down menu. What? It looks like a drop down menu, but basically what will happen is it will force users to pick one of the options from the option set. Right. You notice that it's not really an option set. It doesn't show them all. It only shows like the first six in this case. But when I enter something, I'm just going to enter Wyoming, for example. When I go 
WY, notice that it lets me pick Wyoming as one of the states. And I can't, I mean, I can type whatever I want, but it's going to go back to Wyoming. If I enter gibberish, it goes to nothing. So I'm actually now forcing the users to pick one of the options on that drop down menu or on that option set, which is great. That removes one of those fears the companies have that if they leave the text field, then it's going to, you know, enable everyone to enter typos. Some people will enter it as, you know, FL. Some people will enter it as Florida. They'll enter the whole name of the state. Now it doesn't matter. Look, it stays as FL. It forces you to pick the right value. This tip is awesome. You have to agree with me on that by clicking on the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done that already. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Two Minute Tuesday. We'll see you next week.